everybody, welcome back to another video. Right, this morning we're heading down to the East Lothian town of North Berwick, which is around 35 minutes drive from Edinburgh, and in 2021 was voted the best place in Scotland to live apparently. So let's go and see what it's all about. First off, we are climbing North Berwick Law. I've been to North Berwick a number of times, but I've never actually climbed it. And similar to Arthur Seat in Edinburgh, it's a volcanic plug, a hardened rock of magma, which is about, I think, 187 metres above sea level. I say it should take about an hour to climb it, but hopefully it'll not take as long as that. However, there's a couple of routes that you can take you know, if you're a more advanced climber or like the more leisurely stroll up. Let's see. often get this part of the world is it's warm warm early in the morning but what an amazing view eh? already as you can tell it's extremely windy up here even my wind Protection is not doing the job, so we'll need to upgrade on that one. But what awesome views across North Berwick, East Lothian, and up towards Edinburgh, across the Firth of Forth. Okay, over in the distance, we've got the Kingdom of Fife, and obviously North Berwick itself. Craigleith Island. So I'm standing in what was an old military building, which would have been used during World War II, given the great views that it gives across the Firth of Forth. And also atop here is an, the remnants of an old Iron Age fort. So since 1709 there's been a Wales fishbone that stood on top of the, the summit. It has been replaced three times during that period, however it was removed in 2005 due to safety Concerns and what's here is now just actually a fiberglass replica. Does North Berwick have to offer? Let's grab a coffee and find out. So you have this old 17th century St Andrew's Church, the ruins and graveyard. Maybe you want to take a wander along the high street. Or maybe you fancy a bit of putting. Chill on 
this amazing beach. If you're into your wildlife, you can visit the Scottish Seabird Centre. Or come down and check out the harbour area. Lobster hatchery where they rear lobsters and will release them back into the wild. Apparently, a female in the wild can lay up to 20,000, however, out of that, only one will survive. So, this is to sustain their future. Rock we're heading to now, and the reason it's white is because it's a colony of over 150,000 gannets, and it is known as one of the 12th wildlife wonders of the world. for the northern gannets in the world. And the good news is that actually their eggs are hatching. The guga, the young baby gannets, are in the nest. So we will be guga spotting. And then what we'll do is we'll come back in along the coastline. So hopefully a bit calmer water there for us. Join in the John Muir Way at Tintali Castle. That's the island. Interesting facts about that is the name is actually Scots Gaelic for the Rock of Leith, and it was actually originally a rabbit worm. However, in the 1950s, the disease wiped pretty much wiped them out. The puffin colony there was once the largest in the world, over 28,000 birds. However, invasion of a plant which choked their burrows and mean they couldn't rear their young. of the Bass Rock and Craig Leith. Fantastic trip, but definitely highly recommend it. We used Sula boat trips, uh, provided a great service, had social distancing measures in place, a seat seating plan, um, and yeah, can now rate it highly enough. It's about an hour and a half. There are other boat trips that you can take, so if you're a wildlife enthusiast, there's ones that you can actually dock at the, the island, but they're a bit more expensive. The trip there for an hour and a half is £26, but some of the more expensive ones are up about £100. So yeah, absolutely brilliant. <laughs>